Hi, I'm Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school math teacher, and I'm going to show you how to solve what we'll call simple trig equations. Those are ones that have just a, a single primary trig ratio uh, in a kind of a regular equation, no quadratic equations or anything like that, just linear. Uh, so we'll do a couple of examples. Uh, one, the first one will be a little simpler than the second one. So here we have cos theta equals one half. So cosine of theta, that's the function, and that has to be equal to one half. And I'm just going to remind you about the cast rule. So if you don't already know some of these things, you might want to look into them. I'm just sort of explaining the process here rather than teaching you all of why this all works. So the cast rule is uh, just a reminder for us that the th of the three primary trig ratios, all of them are give a positive result in the first quadrant. Only sine is positive in quadrant two. Only tangent is positive in quadrant three. And only cosine is positive in quadrant four. So what this tells us right away, because we see that cosine of the angle theta is positive one half. That means that we're going to get an angle that could be up here, and we could get an angle down here. Those are the two uh, quadrants where we will get solutions. So we expect two solutions, one of them between 0 and 90 degrees, and one of them between 270 and 360. So I'm just going to, th this is actually a pretty nice number, one half. You could use the unit circle or a special triangle to find that. But I'm just going to use a calculator to show you how that part works. So what we'll do is we'll use the cosine inverse function on the calculator, and we'll put in one half. You can put in the fraction, or you can put in the number 0 0.5. And I get 60, and this is in degrees right now, so 60 degrees. I'm just going to write it like this. Notice I'm not going to write theta equals. So I'll just write cosine inverse of one half is 60 degrees. Now that is the quadrant one solution, but there's another corresponding quadrant two solution. Okay, so first off, let's notice this is an acute angle. It would be the acute angle right here, 60 degrees. And so there's another related angle with the same cosine, which is 60 degrees from the x-axis this direction. That is 360 minus 60. So one of our solutions is 60 degrees, and the other solution is 360 minus 60, or 300 degrees. Let me just write that down. How I got that, that was 360 degrees minus the acute angle, 60. That's where that came from. So those are the two solutions to this equation. All right, let's do one that's a little more complicated. Fresh page. How about this one? 5 times the sine of theta plus 1 equals negative 2. Now this one's only more complicated because it has some extra terms in it. Notice we still have just sine theta here. That's uh, pretty doable. Let's work on this. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I'll have 5 sine theta equals negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Now, sine of theta is one piece. It's a function, sort of like f of x. And so I can just divide both sides of this equation by 5, and I'll be left with sine theta on the left-hand side on its own. This is 5 times sine theta divided by 5, and I have this equation. Now notice how similar that is to what we worked with in the, uh, in the last example. Primary trig ratio equals a number. Cast rule. And I recommend just draw this out for yourself as you work. Sine has to be a negative number. Sine is, everything's positive here. Sine is positive there. That means I'm going to have something there and something there. Grab my calculator. Sine of theta is negative 3 fifths. So let's do sine inverse. So in my calculator, shift and then just above the sine button. Negative 3 fifths. Again, you can use a fraction if you want, or in that case, you can put negative 0 0.6. And I get, oh, not such a nice number. In fact, a negative number. Let me write this down just like I, I see it on my calculator sine inverse of negative three-fifths is about negative 30, well, we'll just write negative 37 degrees. We'll round off. Now, here's the thing about the inverse functions on your calculator. They give you angles that are between negative 180 and positive 180. Those are the angles that they give. Maybe they give exactly 180. I can't remember now. They don't give you angles like 200 degrees. They only give you angles between negative 180 and positive 180. And so what this means, the negative ones are counted from the positive x-axis 
going clockwise. So for example, this red line that I drew here looks like about negative 45 degrees. That's how your calculator would say it. It would not go all the way around and say 315 degrees. So the negative ones are down here, the positive ones are here, counting from the x-axis. So negative 37 is 37 degrees clockwise from the x-axis. So this gives us one of our solutions is 360 minus 37. Maybe I shouldn't have written this right here, but in any case. Uh, let's see, that would be 323. That's approximately. Or we have another solution. Theta is, it could be 37 degrees away from the x-axis on this side. That's the related angle using the acute angle 37. So 180 plus 37 is 217. Sorry about that. So those are the two solutions. And one other way to write this, if you like, using set notation, is that theta is in this set. 217 degrees, 323 degrees. So those are the two solutions for that trig equation. Okay, I hope that's been helpful, and feel free to ask questions if you like. Thanks.